Hey folks, this is Brian, and you're listening to the Mission Sicily podcast. Everybody, welcome back to the Mission Sicily podcast. Uh, if you are just joining us, we are right here in the middle of first quarter 2024. Want to welcome you back around. Um, this is a new season in the podcast, and uh, I'd say a new season in the ministry here in Sicily. I'm excited to get into what that looks like. And uh, but first, yeah, let me just welcome you on board. If this is your first time tuning in to Mission Sicily. I'm Brian, uh, one of several uh, team members here in our growing network of missions in Sicily as well as in Italy. Uh, We're excited to uh, participate in this mission with you. Um, Let me tell you just a little bit of who we are, what we do. If if you've been around for a while, uh, you know, this mission has been uh, in in movement, moving, um, mission in motion for over 10 years now. We came here in 2013. And so we've got uh, at least 10 years under our belts and uh, excited that God continues to fuel uh, vision and support and grace (laughs) to do what we do here. So who are we? What are we doing? Well, we exist to, first of all, make disciples, plant churches, and build bridges uh, of hope here in Sicily and, uh, again, all over Italy as our network is growing. We are striving to enlist, to train, and deploy the next generation of disciple makers, church planters, and yeah, bridge builders. What do we mean by bridge builders? Well, we find that the the church here in Italy, and we've heard this for decades now, you know, I've been traveling here to Sicily for over 30 years, and in the decades of visiting and talking to other missionaries, national pastors and national leaders, they've all said the same thing. Uh, The evangelical church here in Italy is we are few and far between. (laughs) So there's a lot of isolation. And, you know, it kind of makes sense historically with how Italy uh, grew up over the last uh, couple of millennia. And uh, the Greek city-state model really had an impact. And then, you know, the the Catholic Church with the different dioceses and quartiere uh, here in Italy, um, all kind of fueled each town and village and commune having its own identity. And really that, that filtered down into the church. Um, and you can see it all over. Uh, one church uh, of maybe five, six people, <laughs> because the churches are small here, uh, another church of 20 to 30 people in the same town, uh, pretend like they don't even know each other, they don't participate uh, rarely. Um, is there any kind of good accord or agreement between them? And so bridge builders internally in the church, absolutely. There's also an external feature to all of that as well, where um, there's a history here of persecution of the evangelical church. Um, and what we're talking about, you know, you could call it Protestantism, uh, Christianity at large outside of the, uh, the, the you know, the national uh, confines of the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, um, whatever we want to call that, there, there's never been a good rapport between that local church, and we're talking evangelical, and the community or the society uh, at large. And so we're seeking to rebuild that. We're seeking to repair the breach between um, the evangelical Christian church and the community and the society uh, around us. And so bridge builders in that sense, bridge builders in, in, in another sense, we have that internal, the external, but then the outreach side of that, where we have refugees here in Italy, immigrants, we have, uh, other ethnicities. And, you know, uh, if you look at, <laughs> you know, the, the demographics here in Italy, uh, that is growing. Immigration is growing. Refugees are growing. A lot of Italians are um, emigrating outside of Italy and 
immigrating are these other nationalities. And so the metrics are skewing, the demographics are changing. Um, and historically, Italians tend to be, as a people, um, there's a little anthropology for you, but Italians tend to be xenophobic. And so this has been a struggle uh, for Italians in general, but also in the evangelical church, we find this as well. And so there's that internal bridge building among churches. There's the external to the community at large, but then there's the outreach side of that to other nationalities. And so we want to see, with all of that said, we want to see a multiplication movement emerge among leaders that's fueled by a passion for Jesus and a heart for their homeland. Talking about indigenous Italian nationals who are after they're, they're brothers and sisters, they're after their families, they're after their friends and neighbors, they're after the people that they work with, they're after the people that they, they come into contact with, uh, to shine light, to be a beacon of hope. Um, and that's what we mean, bridge builders of hope. And so we place a very heavy value, as no doubt you've already heard, on indigenous, facilitative, biblically-based, Jesus-modeled methodology. That's who we are, uh, what we're doing, and um, we're largely, our presence here is uh, in the South. We also have uh, partnerships and an emerging multiplication movement happening in the North near Torino, Turin. Uh, so extreme North, extreme South, uh, that's who we are and that's, that's what we do. That's what we're about. So if you're just joining us, uh, wanted to give you just a, a little recap as we start off this new season here in Mission Sicily. It's not just Mission Sicily. Uh, we have another name, Mission Italy, uh, that we're developing as well. Um, I know, not <laughs> not not uh, terribly creative on the names, but uh, when you have to translate in both languages and give an identity, it makes sense to keep it simple. I get asked a lot, and I, I want to roll right into uh, some of the material for this first quarter. Uh, maybe you've been seeing our updates on on Facebook, on Instagram. Uh, we've got a presence on on Twitter or LinkedIn, but really, uh, Facebook and Instagram are our main channels. Also on YouTube, uh, you may be watching this video, uh, this video podcast on YouTube right now. You may be listening to it, but there is a video component. If that's interesting, I don't know if it would be. <laughs> Uh, they say I have a face for radio, so I don't know what that means. Anyway, um, I, I wanted to, to tell you, you know, you, you may have seen some of the updates um, through those other channels and, and this kind of a podcast we're trying to do at least once a quarter, sometimes twice, you know, every, every six to eight weeks uh, we're putting out some content. But in the meantime, we've got lots of other channels, uh, even a newsletter that you can get a hold of uh, in order to keep your, your fingers on the pulse of Mission Sicily. That said, we get asked a lot, Brian, what does your, your normal week look like? You know, you're, you're there in Sicily together with Gino, the pastor of a local church. You guys together are branching out again and planting in new uh, areas, new uh, communities, uh, other towns. You may have heard us talk about these before. We're in the town of Belpaso, which is on the eastern side of the island of Sicily, all the way in the south, uh, the southernmost region of Italy. We're on that eastern seaboard, and around us, we've got a couple of other communities where there's really very little, if any, presence, uh, evangelical presence, Christian witness, missionary, what have you. Um, nine out of ten towns are like that here in Italy. We've got a lot of towns with very little witness. And so again, you know, that rings true. We are few and far between, as nationals have, have coined it. But all of that to say, we are reaching back out. In fact, I just sent out a, a prayer vine. If you're on our mailing list, you probably received that. Check your spam filter if not. Um, but if you're on our uh, normal e-blast, e newsletter e-blast, and you probably already received that, I uh, want to encourage you to take a look and um, pray. Pray with us about moving into these new towns. This is something that we were doing uh, heavily before COVID. We took a pause, reoriented. Uh, last year's podcast really delved deep into how God was, we, we feel like uh, God was 
creating the right circumstances and putting the right emphasis back in play uh, so that we could reorient ourselves for this next season, be better poised to make progress in this next season. And so we find ourselves here about to go back into church planting, and it's really exciting, but I can tell you we took heavy casualties. <laughs> if I can use a, you know, kind of spiritual warfare, um, I don't know how many of you are comfortable with that, but, you know, there there is a, a battle going on for souls. Um, we see that really clear in the in the scriptures, and I, I hope that rings true for a lot of you and in your approach to disciple making and church planting. We took heavy casualties uh, in our in our families and our health and uh, the church at large. Uh, and then came COVID. We had to shut everything down. We were really confined here. I made my way back to the states for a time, but came back to visit. And what I found was the not just the church, but the community, the town itself, on lockdown. For, for most of that. Um, in the States, I was in Nashville for a time and we had freedom of movement. I think, you know, we, we didn't uh, get to get out and move around in public places for about two weeks and that was about it. But all that to say, you know, there's a, a different reality in wherever you are and, and maybe your experience during COVID was different. Here, it was severe lockdown. You couldn't even leave your town without permission from the uh, the local vigili, carabinieri, the police, you know. Um, and so this, uh, you know, the reality that, that we saw, it, it, it shut things down. It made us really introspective, but hopefully not introverted. And that introspection out of that time of prayer, uh, as God, again, we believe God was maneuvering the church here to really consider what are we doing with disciple making? You know, we've got this kind of uh, triangle approach, three points approach of making disciples, planting churches, building bridges. And so at any one time that triangle can shift and the 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 pinnacle becomes or the focus becomes something new and different as as it was on church planting before it shifted and now disciple making took that center stage. Sometimes a bridge building becomes that center stage. We go down into Catania, we distribute food and clothes, we minister to um, the homeless. A lot of those are immigrants, the vast majority. You find very few Italians on the streets here in Italy. Uh, most of the time you're looking at other nationalities that are on the streets. And so, and there's very, re you know, different reasons for that. And the mafia come in, into play and it, everything gets really, uh, really crazy, really quick. But all that to say, um, you know, there's been this shift and we're starting to get back into the, the church planting. And a lot of people know that now to pick up that trail uh, from earlier where this whole thing started off, a lot of people have asked me, well, what, is it, what does it look like? What's your daily or weekly routine look like either there in Sicily or when you go up to the north? Uh, what do they do in the north while you're in the, you know, all those kind of back and forth. And so I wanted to just, I made some notes and I just wanted to go through what does a day look like? What does a, a week look like? What is a normal routine? Um, just to give you some concept of the the things that are in motion here so that when you're praying you know what you're praying into when you're sowing financially you know what you're sowing into and the impact that you're having the challenges that we have the solution that we're bringing to the table and by God's grace, your prayer and financial support, we're winning. We're moving forward. We're, we're bearing fruit. And that's what I wanted to share with you. So let's go through it. You know, we, it, we start off on, let's just start on Sunday. Obviously, we have a, a local church here. And so there are Sunday services. Um, we shift throughout the year. Some of you don't know that. Um, some of you who have visited, you actually found that out. And, oh, it's not a morning service. And no, at this time of the year, we do evening service. Oh, it's not evening anymore. No, we shifted back to morning services depending on the season because there's not like central heating and air. Uh, some of you have seen the pictures in our, in our podcast or on our website. You know, we've got this kind of... Um, 
temporary slash permanent structure that we've been building and land that we've been improving uh, in order to house and, and uh, facilitate other types of ministry ongoing throughout the year. But right now uh, we, we bring in these little space heaters and it's a, essentially like a greenhouse uh, that's been reinforced for the winter. In the summer, it's great, but in the winter, it's a little cold. Uh, we bring in those those space heaters, and so it's better to have morning services instead of evening in the evening in the summer because it gets so hot and there's no AC. And so what do you do? You have all the doors and windows open, but it's cooler in the evening. And so we shift like that with the season. In the, in the afternoons on Sundays, we sometimes have different study lectures come through uh, from other partnerships that we have, and that's been a huge blessing. They've been able to uh, help us advance different themes in the church that ordinarily we don't either have the time or expertise for, and so they kind of come in and provide something that's missing or something that we don't have the capacity to do. And so that's been a, a huge blessing that come through maybe once a month or even uh, every other week and do something special on those Sunday afternoons. Moving through the week then, we've got a Monday night study group where we are following in the footsteps of Jesus. That's literally the name of the group, Suloorme de Jesu. So we're following the footsteps of Jesus and going through the Gospels chronologically and taking um, a group. Uh, it's a mixed group. Some of them have been through our discipleship processes. Some of them are very new in the Lord, uh, even less than a year old. Uh, some of them have been in the church for 40, 50 years. Um, and we have every every shade in between, and we are all doing the same thing. There's no teaching. There's no lecture. It's a let's get in. Here are the verses that we're looking at for tonight. Everyone has read them before they come to that class, and they've listened uh, and and re reflected and prayed about these things. They've come up with questions that they're posing uh, to themselves and to the group. And as they've studied, they've tried to wrestle with the scriptures. They come together. We we read uh, the passage again together as a group. Then we break into these smaller groups. We have about 10, 12 at the, at the moment. And so maybe we have five or six here, five or six there. We have... Um, you know, little groups that, that can come out of that as well. Sometimes if we have more 15, 16 people, then we divide into three or four groups. And our emphasis is on every person participating in the wrestling with the scripture. I'm reminded of um, the, the name Israel and how it means to wrestle with God. And, and, you know, we look at the Berean church that they studied every day to see if it were so, what the disciples were saying. And, and so we have this approach and, you know, the synagogue approach and coming together and, and, and opening this, the rabbi opening the scriptures and, and there, yeah, there's, there's a lecture, the didactic element to that, but there's also a lot of questioning and, and, you know, just healthy wrestling and introspection and, and grappling with the meaning and, and the application for today. And so we, we love that approach and our people, uh, man, it, it, that was a ship that had been set out to sail for a long time. It, it's a large ship and it took a long time to reorient to, okay, you know, you're not just going to sit and listen. Uh, we want you to think, we want you to, to read the scripture reflect, think about it, ask questions, and um, be able to pose questions, but also participate and wrestle uh, with it in, in group settings, every person participating. And sometimes, you know, we, we leave this group to others so that it doesn't become focused on myself or Gino or Stefano when he's down here from Torino. Uh, but as a, as a group, they're learning that they're all following Jesus. Now, you know, again, they're all shades of that and, and how long they've been following and maybe even the distance at which they've been following. Our emphasis is on continuing to pursue Jesus. That's it. Um, and some of them are, are much closer in than others. And some of them follow much closer, listen <laughs> much closer, you know, and, and you have that, you know, with, with anything. Uh, we, we are... Uh, in, in the country here, let's say, uh, this is not a Milan or even a Palermo where we are. And so we have frequently in front of my apartment here, we'll have flocks of sheep 
coming by. Uh, you know, you hear the bells and uh, uh, my cats are really interested in who, who's this and what are they making so much commotion? Uh, we have horses go by as well and uh, other critters. But all that to say, um, we have a lot of these pastors, shepherds, who are leading their flocks along. And, you know, there's all kinds of proximity to, to that pastor. And he's watchful. He's looking at all of them as they're walking along. But there are some pressing to be closer to him than others. Others are more comfortable to, to kind of sit back and, and, and just kind of follow the crowd. But, you know, we, we look at that in, inside of the church as well. And we go, okay, the, the importance here is that everyone is following the master. Everyone's following Jesus. We're all disciples of of Jesus, of the master. But we understand that there are, uh, you know, things in everyone's life, phases that we go through, seasons, and some of us are more earnestly pursuing and, and we're closer and we're l listening to every word that's said. Others are content to kind of come along. But in these groups, the emphasis, again, is not on a, a specific leader. It's not on, in, in fact, you know, as I said, we we uh, strategically remove ourselves from the situations at times just to allow the questions, allow the wrestling, allow them to grapple with scriptures, to pose questions, to try to answer, um, you know, and, and we'll point them, hey, that, that needs some more study. You know, let's, let's pick this up again next time. You guys have a week. Um, get into some kind of commentary or reference uh, or do some study on your own. You know, get in, dig in, dig, 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 dig. Uh, be a Berean here in this group. And so, you know, we, we are excited for that and that alleviates, you know, uh, us having to be present in these Monday night situations sometimes. And we'll go down to Catania, uh, the main city near us. And we participate with a group of other churches here, uh, which again is, is really rare and striking where we, we can all agree as churches, not on theology or practice or methodology or format or, or hardly anything, but we can all agree that somebody needs to help the, the crisis of immigration, the people on the street that don't have food or clothes or what have you. And so at least we've been able to focus on building bridges there internally, those that internal bridge, and we can go down and we'll get into vans or caravans uh, of cars. And, uh, you know, some of the ladies in the church, maybe they'll make some pasta or we'll have foods and uh, clothes. And we, we just go out looking for people to minister to and uh, share some encouraging words, share uh, some love uh, with them and tell them that they're not alone. And so um, that is a, that, that's a way that we found a bit of a rhythm here on those Monday nights. night we have prayer groups that meet um we are in this season we've been meeting in a very central location we're trying to decentralize that and uh not to marginalize but to multiply the effect of groups forming to pray and what we what we found and what we're wrestling right now in this season is with the the feeling of well we've always done church or we've always done prayer or we've always done this approach we come in we have our format a uh, format to follow and we we go through the routine and we're questioning our fruitfulness we're qu questioning um is this is this the most effective thing we can do echo uh in in the in this season can we change things not to necessarily, you know, turn over the apple cart and have to start from scratch, but can we can we shift things so that there's more freedom? It's like going to the chiropractor, right? Um, you're not going to take out your spine, but you want to correct some things if there's a blockage, so that there could be better movement, better flow of of blood and oxygen and all of that, you know, through the spine, and that you know a nerve isn't being pinched here or there. There's freedom and less pain and less stress. And and there's flow. That's what we're trying to do with our Monday nights, uh, sorry, our Tuesday night prayer. And so with that, <laughs> what's, what's exciting is that we are, we're seeing eyes open up to what prayer could actually mean. And this is, 
uh, a slow, you know, everything we do here is slow. It's so slow. They said, you know, before coming over, they said, Brian, if you come to, to Italy, just be prepared. You're not even going to have a voice into the local culture until after you've been there a full decade or more. And I, yeah, having been here a full decade, I can say that is absolutely the case. Um, and this is, you know, really been our approach on the uh, facilitative side where we're coming through the local nationals and uh, partnering together with them to make that movement. It makes it a little easier, but it's still so slow here. And this is why, you know, the appeal to pray, just like this week, sending out the prayer vine. Uh, that's why it's so important that we have the prayer covering and the partnership in prayer with you. And so these Tuesday night prayer groups are focusing on, obviously, the lost, our disciple-making processes, the new churches that we are uh, forming and, and, you know, we're still in a strategizing phase, but we're putting, uh, our hands to the plow again in certain towns around us. I'll make more of this, uh, mention of this in a moment, but certain towns around us that you, if you've been around for a long time, you've heard us talk about, which is, um, Nicolosi, Mota San Anastasia, and the closest one, Piano Tavola. And um, that was what the prayer vine was about uh, just this last week. And so um, looking at our local church here in Bel Paso, the souls that we are trying to impact that are coming in, they're curious. Uh, we've had baptisms even in the last couple of months. And um, yeah, I, I want to talk to you about baptisms. I don't know if I'll get to it on, on this episode or not, but there's some curious things with baptisms happening, some curious things with uh, anointing and healing and uh, man, just some some really fun stuff. But I want to get through this first because we're at the top of the year here and, and I want to reorient uh, everyone who's listening or watching especially if it's the first time, but those of you that have been around longer, just to reorient who we are, what we're doing, and the impact that you're having. But I do want to get to those other more curious things and interesting things uh, later on. Hopefully on this episode, if not, we'll push it to the next. But with those Tuesday night prayer groups, that's been the focus, the, the local town, these new church plants, uh, and then our, our island here in Sicily and our nation. Um, as you guys know, we've still got war going on in Ukraine. We've still got refugees here from uh, the Ukraine living in our town. We have Syrians still from past wars. Um, it, it's crazy what we see here. You know, we're, we're not a, a big metropolitan, everyone welcome kind of country. As I mentioned, there's a little bit of xenophobia. It's not like Nashville, where I'm from, that uh, that kind of thing is super normal. We don't see that a lot. And so it's crazy when we when we see that here because the Italians don't know what to do with them a lot of times. And so we're praying into that so that our people, first and foremost, become those bridge builders, uh, even here in our in our own town but uh, certainly on the national level as, as well. Moving on into our Wednesday, we have uh, Wednesday night Bible studies. We're going verse by verse through the New Testament. Um, it, it's a different model where we're not emphasizing on the chronology of the Gospels or on the missionary journeys of Paul, but we're going through and we're examining Scripture um, passage by passage and verse by verse through that. It's a deep Bible study. On Thursday nights, we have another disciple-making group that we're focusing on the missionary journeys of Paul. And so these are folks that have already been through some of those uh, baser foundational courses, foundational um, approach, I guess, or, or groups or systems, processes that we have. And, and now they're looking at, okay, based on what we know about God's love for us, based on the fact that we're following Jesus, based on the fact that he was a disciple maker and that he, he was looking not just to make a convert, but to make disciples who make disciples, and, and created a movement. And if we want to, to follow that and imitate that, imitate him, then let's look at how that fleshed out in the early church and going through Acts and looking at Paul and his missionary journeys has been super helpful to us because we're seeing the impact as he expanded the vision beyond where uh, he was and it was sent out to do things. Gosh, could we as a church 
do the same kind of thing? Could we, could God call us to be in Antioch and send out a, a Paul and a Barnabas and, and a Silas and a Timothy and others uh, and have Luke following around and recording things and ministering to Paul? Could we, could we imagine what that would look like? And so we're praying in this season that God would uh, help us to form relationships with other communities, even outside of Italy, here in Europe, but outside of Italy, for that very uh, reason that we could begin to look outside of our own box, our own context at what God is doing in other parts of Europe to, to breathe fresh uh, vision and inspiration into uh, what we're doing here. And so that's our Thursday night groups following Paul's journeys. Friday night is emphasizing uh, our youth and young people. They come together, they worship, and they study the word. Um, and <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to save that one for another time as well. I want to come back around to some things and and dive a little bit deeper. But for this episode today, um, it, it's exciting to see what God is doing in the hearts of young people. I remember years ago being a, um, a missionary in Estonia, so extreme north uh, of Europe, still Western Europe, but in the st extreme north. So if you draw a line direct from Sicily and just go north, and right before you hit Finland and the Arctic Circle, you, you hit Estonia. And I, I remember our experience there. This was uh, 15 years ago or more. And what we found was a young culture, uh, a youth culture of kids getting together on Friday nights for no other reason than to worship and pray. And they would be there for hours, two, three o'clock in the morning. And it, it wasn't like a, you know, a spectator kind of entertainment concert kind of thing. It was a, everyone was there worshiping on their knees, crying, uh, praying, calling out to God, worshiping, prophesying, all this kind of thing was happening. Um, and God birthed a, a youth movement um, out of that. And, and, you know, we had nothing to do with it. We were observing what was happening. And, and I'm grateful that God is tugging at the hearts of our young people as they get into scripture. And as, as the illumination is happening internally, as the light's coming on, God is doing some incredible things in our youth. And I, I hope I get to, to talk about that uh, on, a, on another episode. But uh, the last point here, which is every bit uh, as important as the others, is that Saturday night is pause. Saturday night is to reflect. Saturday night is time uh, with God in, in the Word for personal uh, refreshing with family. Um, we, we don't do, do a, a work on, on this day, um, not, not rigidly following some rule or law, but, but because we, we've seen that there's fruit also from taking a step back and breathing and and just being grateful for all that God is doing. And, and we keep that focus and that emphasis on this is his work. We're participating. Uh, we're sowing, we're watering, whatever, but he is bringing the fruit. And we're so grateful, so grateful for that. And so everyone within, you know, these, um, these, circles that are forming on all of these nights, whether it's the prayer or the, the study groups or the, the Sundays or the Wednesdays, all of these are creating groups, are creating core members. And, and we're emphasizing that each person is participating with the disciple making movement that we're creating. And so this is the, really the first time, this is what's so exciting, you guys, is that this is the first time in this church, which has over 50 years of history here, over 50 years of history, and this is the first time that people in the church are excited and, and actively pursuing having around them two or three other people that they are discipling the first time. And I'm just, I, <laughs> I'm so excited. So they make weekly appointments, they have a coffee, they get together, they invite somebody into their home, which is really tough to do here in the Sicilian culture. Um, it's not something widely accepted. I'll tell you this story. Uh, I remember, you know, early on making a mistake as a foreigner coming in, I invited some people from the church over to our home and we had some pizza and, and, you know, talked and laughed and all that kind of thing. It was really tough to get them 
to accept the invite, though. And I always kind of scratched my head at why that was. Not long after, a couple of weeks after, they invited us over to their home. And I thought, oh, well, that's great. You know, I'm excited to do that. And I had no idea what a struggle was going on behind the scenes. Uh, they had invited also my friend and ministry partner, Gino, the pastor of the church here, uh, over as well. I, oh, Gino, you're here. I didn't expect to see you. And and he said, oh, I didn't expect to be here either. I said, what do you mean? He said, I've never been. Uh, you've never been inside of their home. What? What, what's going on? <laughs> he was explaining to me, said, yeah, I grew up with Giuseppe. I grew up uh, with, with this family here in Bel Paso. We, you know, even uh, we're about the same age. We were in school and all this kind of thing. I've never been inside. Why? You've never been inside of his home. Why? It's just not our culture to invite other people. And so when you made the invite they felt a responsibility to reciprocate. Uh, and so there's this, there's this feeling of if I accept and receive something, I've got to give so that everything's equal and no one's got advantage or anything like that. Makes the whole gospel of grace a really interesting conversation here in Sicily, I can tell you. But all that to say, we're, we're finding people opening their doors. It, it's strange. After COVID and everything was shut down and internalized, and they began having conversations with friends and neighbors over Skype or Zoom or, um, you know, WhatsApp and all of this kind of thing. They, they began going, well, why can't I use my home as a ministry tool? Why can't I open it up and show hospitality to someone um, and, and so that they don't have to, you know, clean everything and be prepared and invite people, you know, but if I do that and, and the, the work is on me, they can just come in, sit down and receive expecting nothing in reach. Oh, wow. This is just a new world that's opened up. And so we're seeing people actually opening their homes and being hospitable for the first time. It's incredible. It's really incredible. If your experience here in Italy has been otherwise, it's probably because you came in as a, as a foreigner. You came in um, just visiting. You came in as a tourist, something along that lines. And, you know, if there's very limited interaction that's possible, the Italians in general, Sicilians in particular, are super hospitable and open-hearted and will give you the shirt off their back if they know you, they're never going to see you again. <laughs> and so, you know, being here and, and when we see neighbors being hospitable to other neighbors, wow, God is at work. And so we're excited uh, for all of that. I want to move to a, a little bit, you know, zoom out a little bit what's happening on a larger scale as with a, a, a mission leadership team, myself, Gino Stefano, we have a weekly group study together where we're following Jesus as well. We're going verse by verse, chronologically following Jesus so that every chance we get, we are talking about Jesus. We're talking about what it means to serve and follow him. And we're talking about how to share that whatever we're learning that day with others. And so we're being intentional to be personally interacting uh, with each other internally as a leadership team, but also externally and sharing that uh, with other people. It's incredible what we're, what we're seeing for the first time. Um, it's, it's happening on a larger scale now because we're intentionally going through the same types of, of processes. We're growing together. We're pressing into mentors. We're sharpening, uh, our spiritual awareness with others. And, you know, of course there's, there's all kinds of various conferences and seminars and trainings that, that we do, uh, as well. There, there's all these other trainings that are happening, and I, I want to invite you also to pray for that element um, with the mission agency, United World Mission, that I'm with, and, and as well, uh, Gino and Stefano are now with their own mission agencies as they've gone full-time into missions along with me. So the three of us now are completely you know, crowd-funded, uh, support-driven. Uh, we are with agencies that help to cover and protect and also inform and train us as they make sure that we're staying on course 
for the vision that God has given us. And so uh, we're we're doing these other things, and you know it's obligatory that we go and participate with different trainings. And that's something coming up here. I'll be in uh, Albania uh, in in Italian Albania uh, in just a few months at another. Uh, one of these conferences with my group, the United World Mission, been with them for o- almost 15 years now, and I'm excited to see my brothers and sisters be encouraged by what's happening in other parts of Europe. That's part of that bridge building that's helping to feed into our enlarging vision and mission down here in Sicily. That's very necessary. It's also very encouraging because I don't feel so alone uh, here all the way in the deep south, and so that's exciting. It's fueling, um, but it's also informative on where God is taking us in the next next season in the next year, because again, all of that has an impact. And so uh, it's something that I'm asking folks to pray into that God would use that as another vehicle to speak his strategy into us and what we're doing all the way here in the deep South. And so there's, um, you know, work that we're, we're doing that we're having to do, um, on the side in order to support this mission, you know, after COVID, through, um, and then Gino going launching full-time, Stefano launching full-time. We have a deficit of what we need to just pay our personal bills and to, to, to be able to fuel things like the land, which I, I didn't even get a chance to really talk into today, but that's another facet where we're create, we're building buildings on a parcel of land that we're paying for. And we're asking God, how can we use this, not just for Sicilians in this town of Bel Paso, but also for our uh, immigrants we're seeing models of things being done here in Sicily that are incredible, inviting immigrants in to participate with planting uh, in a garden scenario on land and being able to harvest and take things home and, and that being a blessing to them and being a blessing to the church. We're looking at ways to uh, incorporate them here on our on our land in, in kind of creative ways that you know, it, there's no other models that we can see around doing this kind of thing. And so we're learning from each other. We're, we're pushing each other and we're asking God, you know, for the provision to be able to support ourselves, support our families, uh, just pay our bills, uh, to be able to do more. Uh, we, we lack technology. You know, we don't even have a projector. This is something that I've been wrestling with Gino because uh, we don't even have a projector to be able to show a video that would be helpful to some of these uh, Monday night, Thursday night, Wednesday night groups that we, we would love to be able to um, use technology as a way to bring people in and, and, and enlighten or, or enlighten their understanding in more than just, you know, looking at uh, black and white print on a page. And so we're asking God for provision for, for the land, for technology, for ourselves. And, you know, Gino's got two kids at home. Stefano's got two kids at home. And so we're, we're asking God for that kind of provision so that we can do what we feel called uh, to do. And so there's, there's ministry expenses that we, we haven't even been able to consider or, or adventures and, you know, church planting that we haven't even been able to consider because of the restrictions of uh, finances and support. And so that's my appeal to you today. Um, I wanted to give you an overview of what we're doing, who we are, what's going on, uh, even on the day-to-day. We're going to get into some of those other specifics at another time, the baptisms, the the youth culture, that's the movement that's being created here, um, and some of the fun things that are happening with the land that we hope to see this summer, the new church uh, formation that we're doing in Piano Tavola that will start here in just a few months. We're looking for a place to rent um, a small sal- um, a small hall or a, a room that we can invite people from the community into even on their like their lunch break uh, where they can have a place to come and listen uh, to the word and, and study and, and interact and as we said wrestle uh, with grapple with scripture and with God and um, hopefully introduce them to the master so that they can be followers of Jesus as well. And so that's our heart. That's what we're doing. I want to invite you into that. Would you pray?
Would you find a weekly moment, uh, even a daily moment, where you dedicate that to what God is doing here in Mission Sicily and Mission Italy? Would you pray for myself? Would you pray for Gino and Stefano, our families? Would you pray that God continues to um, uh, give us the strategy that we need for this new season of mission in Sicily? And would you would you sow? Would you support? Would you share this with somebody else? Uh, would you would you find a way? to creatively participate in what we're doing here. Uh, just want to invite you into that. And if you have questions, if we can answer things, if I, I'll set up a Zoom with you, uh, you know, email, whatever we can do to provide the, the insight that you are craving so that you can feel more a part of what we're doing here. And so all that to say, thank you for uh, following what we're doing here. Thank you for participating. Thank you for your prayers more than anything else. Uh, prayer is needed. Um, the protection and the provision that comes from the prayers, it's tangibly felt over here on the harvest field uh, that we're in. And so, so grateful for you. Thank you so much, my friends. And we will see you around on the next episode. Ciao for now.